Zone. 3 AW. Until noon, this is Neil Mitchell. Okay, if it's changed the world Friday, this might change the world. It might keep you alive or somebody you know alive. And this is time now. I was talking to Mark Connor in the first half hour of the program. He's on board a Qantas flight from Perth. The plane's coming in to land. A woman has collapsed with a heart attack. Uh, well, he, he has some training, well, some significant training in first aid from working in the mines. He gets the woman, there's no pulse, no respiration, non-responsive. Uh, he works on her with a defibrillator, with CPR. By the time, as the plane's landing, by the time they land, strong pulse, respiration. In fact, after some oxygen, she was conscious again and taken off to hospital. Uh, that's how important this is. Now, that's timely because we're talking... I was talking earlier about the defibrillators and how available they are. You see them in the street, you see them at footy, uh, footy grounds, amateur footy grounds. And I, I under advice, bought one myself to keep around. And I thought, well, do I really know how to use it? I've looked at the instructions and uh, it seems all fairly automatic. Now, the Chief Executive of Ambulance Victoria, Tony Walker, paramedic himself, of course, offered to come in and give me a tutorial. Tony, good morning. Morning, Neil. Okay, now we have here what? We've got a defibrillator. We do, so a defibrillator. You'll see lots of them around, as you said, uh, around uh, various locations in the community now, and they're all a little bit different, but they all do about the same thing. So basically they're a, a box. You open up the box if you've got someone who's collapsed and unconscious, so they're not well, responding. I should say we've got somebody yeah. collapsed and unconscious on the table. We it's do. half a body. We do, half a body on the table. So if someone's unconscious, not responding to you and not breathing normally... Um, we recommend start compressions on the chest and get someone to get the AED. So we'll okay. assume that's happening now. We're opening the box. Opening yep. it up here. You simply open it up. Each one's different. When you open up some, they'll start talking to you straight away. This one we're using, which are the ones that are at Melbourne Airport, um, uh, will basically start, um, will talk to you once you press the button on it. I think mine talks to me as soon as I open it the does. lid. Will that be right? That's yeah. correct. Okay. That's correct. Right. So this one, you press a button. Press a button. So you just press the on-off button here as I'm pressing now. Yep. Apply pads to patient's bare chest. Now, it's telling us to apply pads, so you simply take the pads out of the uh, the case. Yeah. They are a peelable pad. You peel one pad up and place it on the top left-hand side of the chest. And there's an illustration here to show you where to put it. There yeah. is, which just makes it much easier. And the same on the bottom right-hand side of the chest. Stay clear of patient. Right right analyzing. Now, it's now checking the patient's heart rhythm. Oh, I see. So it's saying stay. Stay clear of patient. Yeah. Stay clear. We've got the pads, one on the top Shock one. advised. So it's now alerting us Stay to shock. Stay clear of patient. There's an Give orange... shock now. An orange button there that will... Um, we're pressing. Now, if I don't press that press button... Press the flashing orange button now. It will keep insisting that I do. And so I'm about to press that button now. Deliver yeah. shock now. Shock delivered. Delivered a shock to the patient. Begin CPR. It's now telling me to begin CPR. It'll do that for about two, two minutes later. It'll recheck the patient's heart rhythm. And if the patient still needs more shocks, it will advise me. Um, or it will uh, it will um, um, basically identify whether there's a rhythm there that should have a, have a pulse. OK. Now, you need to know CPR. Everyone needs to know CPR. But the mm. important thing we'd say to people is, if you, even if you don't, give it a go. Um, the ester call takers are trained to quite aggressively actually encourage people to start compressions on someone who's collapsed. So um, even if you don't know what to do, give it a go because any resuscitation is better than none. So if I'm work doing the compressions, does it uh, tell me I'm doing it correctly or, or do more or something like that or not? So some of them, some of them do. This one doesn't. Some of them will actually tell you whether you need to press more deeply or etc. So they, they're getting more and more sophisticated. Um, but they will uh, basically at two minutes, each of them will basically reanalyse that patient's rhythm and then determine whether they, uh, they need another shock. Okay, and uh, once again, if you need another shock, it says stand back and press the orange button. That's correct, and it'll keep doing that until um, until there's no shock required. And if no shock was required in a patient, because some people don't, um, then it won't deliver a shock. They're inherently safe. So there's a possibility that the person is collapsed and you fear that they need a shock. You put that on and it, it doesn't. the person doesn't need one. That's correct. And so does it tell you that, does it? It does. It just says no shock advised, in which case you just do compressions until they either respond or until the ambulance arrives. Yeah. Okay. Does it at any stage give up? Does it say, you know, we've we've given we've been going for fifteen minutes. We've given several shocks. We we're working away on CPR. This case is hopeless. Does it do that? No, the machine doesn't. So the machine will just continually um, alert and look every two minutes. Um, and what we're saying to people is, um, we'd encourage people to keep going because there are cases that may may people have had CPR for forty or fifty minutes, good CPR, and they've survived. So you keep going until an ambulance turns up. That's correct. That's correct. Yeah. Uh, 
Okay, now how many of these are there out and about in the community? So we we don't know. That's really interesting. So we've got about 3,500. Stop three... CPR. <laughs> Stay clear of patients. Okay, so what's it doing now? So it's reanalyzing the patient's rhythm now. And it's uh, going Stay to... clear of patient. So it's checking. No shock advice. So it's telling me no shock's advice now, and which you just go back Begin to CPR. Back to CPR. Oh, but you continue CPR even continue. though there's no shock. That's correct, because if it's not caused by a rhythm that needs to be shocked, it may mean that CPR is keeping oxygen to the brain and heart until we can give drugs to restart the heart. Mm.